Hey guys, a quick vlog on cryptocurrencies and what I perceive to be the cryptocurrency miner scam, meaning the physical machines. I'll get into that in a second. I have some experience to share with you. Now, you know, I've done several videos where I basically uh, poo pooed on cryptocurrencies. Now, the underlying blockchain technology, I'm sure, will have its application here, there, or somewhere else, but people have wrongly conflated cryptocurrency with the blockchain. I felt and still feel to this day that the tokens, the coins, I hesitate to call them coins because they're just mathematical equations at the end of the day, the, uh, the results of it anyway. Uh, the coins, Ethereum, Litecoin, Bitcoin, etc. These, these coins are not the blockchain. They're the product of a blockchain, but they're not the blockchain and I don't think that they have any intrinsic value. I think they will uh, go to dust at some point. Now, I don't have a crystal ball, but I was warning people when Bitcoin was 18,000 and 19,000 and a coin, I was warning people when Ethereum was in the hundreds of dollars. Now these things have since collapsed in value and the movement of the coins are all working together. A lot of the experts out there in cryptocurrencies are telling you stories like this coin was better than that coin, how this coin is going to do really good and this and that. And you had some gyrations based on emotions and psychology and some marketing, some pumping. And a lot of articles come up showing there's been a lot of manipulation of the coin market. So you're, you're just a, when you're in the cryptocurrency space, you're investing, which is really just gambling. You're out there like a, a small ship with no rudder and whether you're, you're up or down has nothing to do with anything but pure luck because there's tons of manipulation. So that said, you, uh, there's a couple of lessons to be learned about general markets with regards to this whole cryptocurrency thing. I've seen it several times before in different asset classes. I've seen it in housing, I've seen it in oil, I've seen it in dry shippers, I've seen it in cryptocurrencies, I've seen the tech bubble in 1999, 2000. So what have you learned? You've learned that when you have a particular space, like the cryptocurrency space, all the cryptos pretty much move together. They all go up at the same time, and they all go down at the same time. They're all down. So a lot of the coins now have disappeared entirely, right? The big boys are still around, Ethereum, Litecoin, Bitcoin, of course, and others. But a lot of them has gone to nothing or practically nothing. We've also seen that the mojo has left the market, when, meaning a lot of the people that were interested, you were Bitcoin here, Bitcoin there, back, you know, the, 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 it was all kinds of news. Now it's really died down because when people get burnt, when people jump into a market, whether it be housing, oil stocks, mining stocks, whatever, or cryptocurrencies, once they get burnt, they don't want to ever go back there again. It's not going to happen. So you need a new set of people to come and push the market up because there's actually no use case really in, in a big way, in a tangible real way for Bitcoin. Bitcoin doesn't do anything right now. It doesn't do anything better. It doesn't have any advantage real. Now people argue against this, but you take a credit card, you can buy anything anywhere. Bitcoin, you got to hunt and there's all kinds of problems with that. Litecoin, you got all kinds of problems with that. Ethereum, all kinds of problems with that. The point is, let's look at that market. Saw how it went up like this and then all this news came out. Oh yeah, Bitcoin, cryptocurrencies, the big investment. All these big whale investors are telling everybody it's going to go to, you know, 100,000 a coin. And what we found out a few months later, a lot of these big boys were selling. As they were telling you to buy, they were selling. That's why they were telling you to buy, because they wanted to sell. They had bought maybe a at a thousand dollars a coin. Maybe they had bought at a hundred dollars a coin. Now they knew because their experience that when the coins at fifteen thousand, eighteen thousand, nineteen thousand, now's the time to get the hell out. I saw it silver and gold, same exact action. What I suspect will happen, based purely on my experience in markets and other uh, commodities, if you will, and other investments, you're going to see a slow drip down. Just, you know, nothing goes up in a straight line, meaning nothing goes like this. They go like this, a little up, a little down, a little up, a little down. And then you get a trend. Now, the trend is now self. And you're seeing that. You're seeing what they call lower lows and lower highs. And that's not a good sign for any investment. So remember, all those people who are on YouTube, and some of them are big names. They were telling you how the new business is cryptocurrency. And they tried to make it out that cryptocurrency was some sort of... Um, 
there was some strategy to investing in cryptocurrencies or some secret to investing in cryptocurrencies. No, there wasn't. It was just a gambling. It's just gambling. It was just buying and hoping it would go up. Now the whole thing is, is slowly collapsing on top of itself. Anyway, again, could pop back up. I'm not an investment counselor, but you got to look at this type of thing highly speculatively, especially something you don't completely understand. Most of the people involved in cryptocurrency investment, most, uh, according to analysis I've seen, is be people between 18 and 35 euros. Basically people who have not gone through a cycle of boom and bust bubbles and collapses. They don't understand. So there's a lot of noobs involved in that market. And there's a lot of expectations that they have based on articles that they read. And you got a lot of people talking to each other who have never done this type of stuff before. So with anything that you're not sure of, you've never done before, you approach with extreme, extreme caution. So let me talk to you about uh, the crypto miner scam. In my opinion, it's a, a scam. I, you know, I don't, I don't know, I have no insider, insider information. This is purely on my perception. Scam might be a strong word, but it's kind of a dark horse type of business, in my opinion, at the very least. So what are we talking about? We're talking about miners are basically machines, computers, sometimes custom built machines that basically mine cryptocurrencies. And so going back several months, I decided, a friend of mine called me up, said, in terms of an experimentation, we decided, let's buy a couple of crypto miners just to see what it's about, right? So somebody we knew said, come on, Steph, buy a whole whack of them. They wanted to buy uh, well over $100,000 worth of these machines. I said, no, I'm not doing that. I, you know, we looked at it, we studied it. The big question we had up front was whether it was better to buy the mining machines and mine the coin or whether it was better uh, to just buy the coin themselves and hopefully it goes up and you sell it, you make your money. So we decided to buy the machines more or less because it was, it was more of a nerd exploration. We just wanted to learn about what it's all about. One thing you learn in life, you don't really know until you get into it. You don't really know what a fight is about until you've been into a few fights. You don't know what it's really like to uh, build software until you build software from A to Z, deploy it to market and get, got the feedback from people. Uh, and you don't know what it's like to invest or to, or to mine cryptocurrencies until you bought the miners, brought them back, set them up, started mining them, set up your wallet and all this kind of stuff. So we wanted to learn that. So we just bought a couple of machines and I'm so happy that we only bought a couple of machines because so we get these machines in and first of all, they were super noisy. When you put them on, it was like a vacuum cleaners. I think I put a, what do you call it? shop vac vacuum cleaners. That's how loud they were. And uh, we only had two, thank, thank heavens, we only had two. So we bought these two machines. They turned out to be vacuum cleaners, super loud, super noisy, sucking a lot of energy. And luckily, I put them in my friend. We put them into my friend friend's shed out in the backyard, so nobody can hear these these loud, loud machines. And when we placed the order in September for the machines, they were paying out something like five, six hundred a month, maybe seven hundred a month, depending. You know, these things, the values of the coins fluctuated, as did the difficulty. As more and more people are mining coins, difficulty increases, right? Anyway, so we placed the order for these machines in Asia. And, uh, and they seemed reput a reputable company. We checked online, they had a good Facebook presence. We could call them, we could talk to them, they responded to the emails. We said, okay, let's try it with two. Now we had to wire the money out to Asia and that's a bank transaction. It's kind of funny, a, a company that is selling you machines to mine cryptocurrencies only accept a traditional wire transfer through traditional banking, not cryptocurrency payments. Or maybe they did cryptocurrency, I'm not sure, but I think it was only wired, but that's another story. Anyhow, so we wired the money over, and then after we wired the money, we had to wire them, I think it was 60 or 70% of the value of the machine to get, and they, they promised us two weeks to deliver. So then it was two weeks, and it was a month, and it was two months, and three months, and four months. So they, they, they sat on our money for four months. And now, what do you do, right? Now, the machines were still paying out decent money, but every month they were making less and less and less money as more and more people jumped onto the game. And so we realized at that point it would have been much better off to just buy a coin because we didn't anticipate that these, these, uh, these people out in Asia were going to sit on our money for months. What I suspect they were doing, 
because it was not just us. There's a lot of other people I know who are buying these machines. What I suspect was happening is these companies would take the money, cover the cost of the machines, and then put them online and start mining the coins. Why not? They would mine the coins for three, four months when they're most profitable. And then at some point, whatever metric they decide to use, then they would just ship out the machines to the uh, rubes in uh, the West. So we got, we got our machines finally in. Of course, at this point, they're yielding almost half, just above half of what they were when we placed the, the bloody order. So we put them online and we're starting to mine. And we, see, we saw that the rate of difficulty was increasing at about 20% per month, meaning the value at which the machines could output per month was 20%. So you saw within six months, less than that, five months, your machines are basically making no money, uh, hardly any money. So at this point though, we were uh, outliers and I'm putting out videos, I don't know what my timing is, I'm telling people it's not, it's not a good thing. So we unloaded the machines because some people said, no, no, the coins are going to keep going up. They're going to keep going up. So, you know, that's what markets are for. Some people think it's, the coins are going to go up. Some people, people think that the coins are going to go down. So some people buy the coins, some people sell the coins, whatever. So we sold our machines and we could have been wrong. They could have went up. A friend of mine who bought the hundred, over $100,000 uh, worth of machines, well over 100 he, uh, he decided, no, 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 no. This is just a, a blip in the market. It's going to keep going up. So he hung on to the machines. So now let's fast forward uh, from January to now. Machines are now worthless. These machines are now, the difficulty has risen so much and the prices have dropped so much that the machines are basically yielding hardly like, I heard like two, three bucks a month now when they were, when we placed the order, it was like six, 700, something like that. So the lesson we learned from that is that in this space anyway, at that time, it was better just to buy a coin Another thing we learned is that we, I think that they were holding on to the machines and mining with them before shipping them out. Because you got to ask yourself the question, if you're able to produce these machines and then within three months you can pay off the machines through mining, why would you sell them if there's such a huge demand? That was a question that popped up on day one. But we decided to take the risk because we were willing to take the loss of, you know, the machines were three and a half thousand US a piece. Or, so we were willing to take the $7,000 loss just to see what was happening. A lesson. And uh, sure enough, I think what I just suggested to you is the reason why they do what they do. And that's why you have these uh, companies making a ton of money selling the machines. And it's just like the California gold rush. Read about the California gold rush in the uh, 1800s in California. And you had all these people going, there's gold in them hills in California. And they all went to California and they were mining, they were mining. But guess who made most of the money in the California gold rush? The company selling the mining equipment, the pixes and the picks and the sh axes and the shovels and the, and the bags and all the equipment, those are the people who were making who made most of the fortunes during the California gold rush, not the miners.